We're rocking out here. Uh, <laughs> welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I call to order the Clackamas County Board of Commissioners business meeting this April 23rd, 2015. Mr. Krupp, our very able county administrator, will now take the roll. So uh, good morning, commissioners. Uh, we are joined here this morning uh, from the county council's office, Mr. Chris Story, a very affable and very talented representative from the county council's office. And then uh, to my left is our clerk of the board, Mary Rathke, our very able and talented Clerk of the board. So, I'll start with the uh, with the role, uh, Commissioner Bernard. I thought you would say able and talented, Commissioner Jim. Senior. Bernard. <laughs> senior. Uh, oh wait, let me back up that outstanding able and talented <laughs> county commissioner and senior. What's yeah. it going to end up down there? Is what I'm <laughs> here. <laughs> and likewise, Commissioner Smith. Thank you. Here. Ditto, Commissioner Savas. <laughs> here. <laughs> And Commissioner Schrader as well. Oh. <laughs> and then finally, our chair. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance. There is no comma after nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I heard all those school children struggle with that comma that isn't there. Well, I want to acknowledge we have a whole bunch of small humans in the audience. They are the uh, employees' children, and there's actually more than I thought would show up, so I'm glad to see you all here today. We're going to give you a chance here uh, for a photo op. So I will ask you all the children, you forget your parents for once in your life, <laughs> And all the children should come up and just line up behind the commissioners here, and um, we'll make sure your picture is taken. You have a, something collectible. What a thrill to sit next wow. to the commissioners, huh? Wow. How cute is this? Yeah. Just, just move that way all the way down to the end. Sure. You know what? I'll let someone sit in my chair. Oh, well, if Paul's going to give up his chair, you know what I mean? I got to. Come over here by John. See, you notice not a one of them has a tie on. That's outrageous. <laughs> not a one. Okay, let's um, Let's get some of about the, I'm the biggest person, so you're the biggest person. That means you get to sit in my chair. There you go. Oh. So I will stand at the back. You sit here. All right. Would, would you like to sit in my chair? All around me. Would you step up in between the gaps? Watch what you say, this mic yeah. is on. Can you, can you, can you, you can see the camera now. Can you, can you, the camera can't you see you. More room down here. More room down there. Here, go on down there. Man. I can see myself. More room? Yeah, we got more room. I'm on more room. We'll take two so more. There, there, buddy. I'm going to move you up. I'm going to move some other people in here, too. There's that one. Two more. Two more. Two more. Two more. Like herding cats. Everybody keep smiling. Big smiles, eyes open. Yay. Do you guys 
guys look so official. Yay. <laughs> Play with things, huh? <laughs> yes, as is typical with uh, with uh, bring your daughters and sons to work day at two o'clock, they'll be in here and be able to really mess with things good. <laughs> All right. So our first order of business is citizens' communication, and we have but one green card. So if anybody wishes to speak under citizens' communication, it'd be a great time to hand Mary Rathke your card. And the person that's turned in their card is Mac Woods, MacArthur Woods. Clackamas County Commissioners, I am MacArthur Woods. That's my first name after my daddy come home from serving under General MacArthur and gave me that for a first name, but I go for by Mac for short, thank you. After talking last week, me and another veteran, I went to Salem to talk to the headquarters, and that's what I want to talk about today right here in Clackamas County, veterans and service-connected veterans disability that's rated 40% or more disabled. I was surprised to discover that the headquarters in Salem, capital, had little knowledge of how watered down the disabled veterans bill has been since it originated, since its inception in 1955, 60 years ago. At that time, the average three bedroom, one or two bath home was selling between five and seven thousand dollars. That same house, oh, and they were giving them an exemption of ten thousand dollars. So you could have a house a little bit better than the regular standard house they were using and you paid no taxes if you were a service-connected veteran. Today, that same amount is $19,001 after 60 years. It's been watered down. Yet it talks about the World War, no, the Civil War veterans and spouses which I don't think there's even one anywhere in the world alive today. It needs to be updated. It needs to be changed. Us veterans can do that by contacting our state senators, representatives, the ones that makes the laws on rules on voting. I'm a member of VFW, too. This a lot of stuff I can't cover in three minutes. Anybody want to know about it? And I've asked many times before, any one of you feel welcome to talk to me anytime. You can call me at midnight and I'll talk about it, about veterans and disabled veterans, particularly of what most politicians don't know about veterans. And they never say anything about veterans except around election time. Oh my. And out of respect, I don't say any particular one by name, except that they're representing us and talk about what they're doing for veterans while they do nothing. That's interesting. So please call me if you want to know about veterans, and I will update you after I'm qualified, after having over 20 years continuous active duty. I'm service connected. I don't see out of left side. But I do find on one eye, not until I run out of time, Mr. Ludlow, you know, so I'll... But let's find out about veterans and, and, and do something in Clackamas County, only one of 36 counties in the states that needs to honor veterans and, and look out for them. Thank you. Thank Unless you, you Matt. question. You're free. Thank you. I want to let the, uh, the kids know um, that you don't have to stick around for our boring, I mean, exciting meeting. Um, you, you can actually leave now, and you can leave your parents here if you'd like to. Uh, but, uh, but you're you free stay. to leave the building. Thank you. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye guys.
That's interesting. See, I thought they'd leave, but they need to be dismissed. Yeah. That's good school yeah. children, isn't it? All right, Mr. Krupp, we now have several presentations. We, we do, and the first presentation this morning is uh, actually uh, uh, a, an acknowledgement of uh, quite uh, an achievement with our Tourism and Cultural Affairs Department. I'm going to invite uh, Janine Brashears up uh, to the dais to present this, and we have also uh, other representatives uh, from the TDC and to, uh, to join us for this. And uh, we received uh, the uh, Travel and Tourism Industry Achievement Award for recognizing Oregon's Mount Hood territory. So Janine, would you please share this? Presentation on. Can the slides go up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. OK. So good morning, Chair Ludlow um, and commissioners. Um, Thank you for letting us um, present to you today of some of our um, esteemed accomplishments. Um, Danielle Cowan would be here today to present to you, um, but she is attending the annual Oregon State Heritage Conference in Coos Bay. Um, she is representing Mount Hood Territory there, as well as the Willamette Falls Heritage Area Coalition, as the, um, we are receiving the official designation as the State Heritage Area. Um, so with me today is Kirk Mauser, who is our TDC um, board representative, as well as Jared Lyman, um, our social media communication staff. Um, so the reason we're here today is just to make sure that you're aware of um, the accomplishment that we received on April 12th from Travel Oregon at the annual Governor's Tourism Conference in Eugene. Um, each year they honor um, outstanding um, achievements, accomplishments in the tourism industry. Um, and we are really pleased that we run two of those awards. First was the Outstanding Oregon Social Media Program Award. Um, this was given in recognition of um, all the increases that we've seen in the, the year of 2014 efforts um, with engagement um, by increasing our investment in dedicated in-house staff um, and a large focus on expanding our social media reach by using new technology and also developing new um, techniques such as um, something unique to the industry was itineraries that our staff created. Um, when given this award at the event, Todd Davidson um, commented that Mount Hood Territory's 2014 strategy increased our Facebook followers by more than 20,000 with soaring engagement. Um, he also noted that all of our other social media platforms, Instagram, Pinterest, um, Twitter, all received tremendous strides in both telling and selling the Oregon story. So these are images of some of our um, prized social media posts um, that won the greatest um, engagement and achievements um, in the year 2015. Pleased to say that we've, ex we've exceeded these with some of our more recent posts in the last couple months. So hopefully we'll be eligible for achievement next year as well. Um, and this is a photo of Annie and Bailey, who is our, social, is our PR um, communications chair our um, coordinator, as well as Jared Lyman, who is here, is our social media communication specialist, um, receiving the award from um, the Oregon Tourism Commission. Second of all, we received also the Outstanding Overall Oregon Marketing Award for, as you know, our Austin campaign that we did last year. Uh, it's a three-year commitment. Last year was our first year. Um, we received this for our strategies, as Todd Davison announced, our guerrilla-style marketing tactics. Um, tactics which reward um, traditional elements to entice residents from the Texas Austin communities to visit Oregon's mounted territory, um, primarily for them to escape the summer heat. Um, so the result was a dramatic increase in our website traffic from Austin and the larger metropolitan area. Um, our lodging partners also received, reported a jump in visitation from Texas, particularly Austin. Uh, again, Todd Davison announced when he presented the award to us uh, that in a fun and unique way, we were able to garner more than 10 million advertising impressions for this campaign. Um, our custom fleet of covered um, wagon-style pedicabs uh, were wrapped in images from mounted territory in addition to a citywide scavenger hunt, um, custom-designed billboards, radio spots, and website banner ads all encouraged Austin residents to visit Oregon's mounted territory. Um, so both awards were new um, categories that were offered by Travel Oregon this year. Um, so being the first to receive these awards in both of these categories is especially exciting and means we are helping to set the bar for future tourism marketing efforts within the industry. And we're pleased to be recognized as the leader in Oregon's destination marketing and as a fast-changing industry um, and ever-evolving new technology mediums that we definitely try to stay ahead of. So with that, I think you can see the two awards that we've um, received here. <coughs> 
So again, just wanted to make sure, hopefully, that you're aware of the efforts that we do to promote Clackamas County branded as Oregon's Mounted Territory. So thank you for letting me present to you. Um, and at this time, um, because we have our TDC board, uh, one of our um, members here, I'd like to introduce Kirk Mauser to you to briefly um, give you an extension of a gift from the cultural side of our efforts. Let me uh, interrupt you just to, uh, to give some floor time to our commissioners. Commissioner Smith. Well, thank you. I think you guys have always done a, an outstanding job. Jeannie, this is a great presentation. Uh, is this the event that Claire attended? Yes. Okay, I saw it on Facebook. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and um, Claire is her sister, who's my friend, and they're all friends. But anyway, it's just wonderful. I love the picture of, was that a selfie in the snow cave? Or, yes. Yeah. That was outstanding. I mean, I couldn't believe it was a selfie on a cell phone. The quality of that picture is just excellent. She's actually one of our biggest um, engagers on social media. She uses our hashtag that we've developed a lot for promoting Mount Hood territory. And the adventure she goes on is, is just astounding. I mean, a lot of pictures from the snow caves up on the mountain throughout the region. And it, I, I'm a little jealous that she gets to go out and do these things and take these pictures. But fortunately, I don't have to climb to do it. I just get to right. use her stuff to promote it. Yeah, maybe we could show that again because I, it's just so fun to look at. And thank you for just taking the, you know, the free stuff that comes your way. And it's not like you have to reinvent the wheel. And thank you for the social media. It's all something that we could learn that don't seem to take the time to do. But thank you. yeah, and we don't often get to see you uh, while you're busy working <laughs> all your magic on there. But <laughs> thank you for doing everything. Thank you. Appreciate Mr. that. Mr. Schrader. Yeah, I just want to thank you guys, too, and I do get to see you a little often, more often, because I'm the liaison to the Tourism Development Council, and it's some of the best marketing I've ever seen. I mean, it's just fabulous, and um, I think the whole notion of going to Texas and Austin was brilliant. Um, I think that it's, uh, hopefully, you can start expanding into other markets, and I suspect that we'll be talking about that sooner than later. But um, we've got a beautiful spot here, and it's time for Clackamas County to remind people it's in Clackamas County. Thanks. Commissioner Bernard. Uh, actually, you know, they're working in many markets, uh, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and Germany, and I imagine there's uh, 50 others. But uh, <laughs> um, I had an opportunity to go down to Australia and New Zealand, uh, where um, Portland or, or Washington County, Clackamas County had a booth and provided lots of information to the tourism folks that uh, book um, travel to the United States. And, and they were, there were lots and lots and lots of people. And uh, I think Clackamas County and Washington County uh, put a lot of effort into getting folks from those parts of the world to come up here. And I also had the opportunity to go to Germany a few years, a couple of years ago, where there are literally thousands of uh, uh, tourist destinations that meet uh, in Berlin, and Berlin had to bring in taxis from around the country to get all the people in and out of the facility. So it's pretty amazing. And then, Kurt, we won't interrupt you. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, no worries. Well, Chair Ludlow, the commissioners. Um, as you, you might be aware, I, I wear dual hats here, and so I'm, I'm, proud, I'm a proud member of TDC's board um, and all the fantastic work that they're doing in tourism here in Clackamas County, but I also serve as the uh, Clackamas County Arts Alliance uh, president. And most recently, in one of my roles at the Arts Alliance, um, we had a, a fantastic uh, exhibit at the Blue Herring Paper Mill uh, company uh, with uh, various artists uh, displaying their work, and I know... Uh, Chair Ledlow, you emceed that event for us. Thank you so much. Um, I'm delighted to present today the uh, board with this beautiful souvenir uh, book, uh, The Blue Herring Paper uh, Company by uh, Frederica Hauer. And so it, it's a lovely illustration of all of the wonderful work uh, that is taking place in this heritage site at the Blue Heron and how arts can, can really help drive cultural tourism. And so nice. thank you so much for your support. And I'm going to go ahead and share this with Mary to share with the, uh, the commissioners. Well, that is really wonderful. I'm so thankful that uh, we have that to look at. Nice, nice, nice. That was thank it. You. That, that was it. We, I think Short we ought to sweet. have a photo op. Yeah, uh, because they one, can hold for, to hold those very nice little... Um, Mm -hmm. Outlines of Oregon and the book as well. Yeah. Bring the book. Okay, bring. The 
last slide over the other one. Yeah, screw it. Would that be okay for a background? <laughs> The, the camera's coming. The memory card uh, kind of ran out, so she's getting a fresh memory card. <laughs> well, it's time to fill the air. So uh, here we go. Well, we certainly appreciate the fine work that our tourism, tourism development council does, and uh, and our tourism department. It is nice to be known, really nationwide, as a destination. Certainly, most of us are here because we're born here. But beyond that, to stay here. Uh, we have everything to offer. If, if, when, uh, when I talk to people, and I, we're, we're gone last week, and uh, certainly people are well uh, acknowledged that from 90 minutes from here, you can get, be on the beach. 90 minutes from here, you can be on the mountain skiing, or 90 minutes from here, you can be down a lush valley up the Columbia Gorge, or even up the state of Washington near their, their big mountains. So they are filled the air adequately. Here we come for the photo op. And now, Mr. Krupp, what we've been really excited about for some time is a presentation by yourself. Yeah, so this is going to be kind of hit viral on oh, YouTube if you keep going with this. Definitely. But uh, actually, you know, the, it's spring, and uh, you know what they say about spring. I mean, spring is a time when every young man's heart turns to budget. <laughs> so uh, we are uh, we are launching we're deep in the middle of the budget development uh, season here at Clackamas County, uh, and I want to take just a little bit of time here this morning to uh, give you a snapshot as to where we're going and what this looks like with a particular interest in providing information to the public so that those who have an interest uh, to participate, learn about, uh, and weigh in on the development and adoption of the county budget, have an opportunity to do that. So this is really just kind of a launching uh, of information to you. I'm going to ask, uh, it says, show me the money. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Mary to go ahead and hit the next slide. Uh, what uh, I wanted to do, give you a quick overview. This is actually this current year's budget, uh, and it's a pie uh, chart snapshot of the entire budget, the $825 million. Uh, it's actually much more complex than what the few slices on there uh, illustrate. About uh, three quarters of that pie is really what we refer to as the general government budget. Um, that, uh, and that represents uh, the general government functions throughout uh, Clackamas County. And I'll, I'll list those for you in a little bit. Uh, but then the unique thing about uh, our county budget is we have a number of what we refer to as component units or service districts. So, for example, we have two separate service districts that provide sewer services to citizens in Clackamas County. And those... Uh, the budgets for those shows up in the Water Environment Services Department. The development agency has got a, a separate budget from the general government budget and the other items that are listed up there in the chart as well. And all those have to be developed and adopted separately from the general government budget. The most interesting part about all this is, is we have budget committees for each and every one of those uh, component units uh, that uh, we convene and meet and uh, get advice for for the final budget. Uh, that's in addition to uh, the general county budget committee that looks at the uh, three quarters of the budget that makes up most of the chart. So let's go ahead and hit the next. So this is a breakdown of the general government budget um, by department uh, and beginning with the uh, single largest uh, department in county government is health, housing, and human services at about 112 
million dollars. Most of the funds that show up here in this budget are actually um, not local property tax dollars, but primarily uh, federal and state-derived uh, funds to provide public health services, uh, clinic services, uh, community development services, and social services, including support to our veterans uh, in Clackamas County. And then, of course, second on the list is the county sheriff's office, and this particular budget includes the jail operations in addition to community corrections. Uh, it uh, is uh, <clears throat> derived from actually several different fund sources in addition to the general fund, uh, and that represents the second largest part of the, the county's general government budget. And you keep going down the list, and of course, transportation and development, where we've got roads and transportation, planning and building, even animal services is uh, budgeted within transportation and development. So I'm not going to go through all of these items individually, but I wanted people to get a snapshot for the scale of the budget um, by department. Uh, so let's go to the next slide, and you can see there that the roll-up for the general government part of our county budget is about $606 million uh, there. So I'll, uh, yes, sir. I just wanted to ask you a question about the DA's budget. Mm -hmm. The DA's budget, uh, does that include the money we get from the state? Yes, yeah, okay. they, get, they, get, they get state money there, yes, they yeah, do. But so most of that's general fund, so. Pardon? Yeah. Most of that's general fund, too, so. Yeah, yes. I mean, his uh, district attorneys, uh, besides uh, John Foote, mm -hmm. are paid through the state. So that money's included in yeah. that. It's yes. not part of the so. tax dollars we collect that go. That's correct. So, okay. Yeah. Commissioner Savas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, either whether it's the, can you roll back to the pie chart? Thank you. So um, I guess people ought to know that that white line at the very top that's about 12 o'clock, that's, that's probably bigger uh, than it is the commissioner's discretionary money, isn't it? <laughs> that, that's a that's a fair. We're, we're, not, we're not even a, we're not even a line on that chart. <laughs> You're absolutely right, and, and the interesting thing is we're putting together the um, the draft budget for this coming year. Um, you you all be pr proud to be able to say that the commissioner's operating budget is actually going to be less next year than it is this year. It's primarily because we're saving money on allocated costs uh, going into next year. But you're right. I mean, we, we barely register on, on the chart there. So. Well, we need to work on that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's go to the uh, next pie chart after this one. So uh, I want to talk just briefly about the general fund, which is actually part of the general uh, government uh, budget, but it represents oh, about $150 million worth of the general government budget, and it's primarily derived from property taxes uh, throughout Clackamas County. There's a little bit of federal uh, and state money that comes into that, and there's some fees and fines and that sort of thing, but this is uh, primarily uh, derived from property taxes. And what we mean by unrestricted is, is that this, this money has the, the board has the most discretion in terms of allocating priorities. A lot of the other funds uh, and a lot of the other money that's in the budget actually is dedicated to some very specific purposes, and we don't have a lot of room to kind of move and juggle it from one program to the next. But the general fund is one where the board has the opportunity to be able to set uh, its key priorities uh, across uh, the county. So we'll go to the next one. And this is uh, a chart that shows how that general fund money is currently distributed, you'll see that the lion's share of that is focused on public safety services. That includes law enforcement um, <clears throat> and other related services, emergency management gets some general fund money and that sort of thing. But you could reasonably say, as you're talking to the public, that for every dollar that uh, they pay in property taxes, 64 cents of that goes to critical public safety services uh, to the citizenry in Clackamas County. Uh, and then uh, what remains then is split among all of the other, uh, all the other functions, including the, uh, the uh, general government and, uh, and uh, administrative functions in county government. So we'll Could you put that in perspective? Go back to that chart if you could. Um, so that is, represents how much money? That represents about $150 million right there. No, no this here? The, the pie there represents the, the unrestricted general fund. Is it 150 
Yes, mm -hmm. about 150 million. So but even though we commit on the prior listing, the second slide, we committed 95 million of that to the sheriff, for example. That, that's correct, because the sheriff's office is funded by not just general fund right. proceeds, but but also by other dedicated proceeds. So yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we move to the next slide? Uh, I wanted to make sure folks know what the budget schedule looks like. And of course, doing the budget is kind of like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. I mean, just as soon as you get done, you go back to the other side and you start painting it again. Uh, and uh, things do really start, though, in earnest in January when we begin to develop our, our uh, revenue estimates for the coming year. We calculate what our uh, cost allocations uh, will look like. To, for costs related to things like technology and mail services and uh, building rentals and that sort of thing. And we also at that time calculate our personnel costs, which are usually affected by the uh, any cost of living adjustment and changes in benefit packages. In February, we uh, put together a budget workshop for all departments to go through the schedule and the, the requirements that we're going to be asking of them in terms of the materials they put together. And then through uh, March and April, uh, the, all of the departments uh, eventually meet with the county administrator and finance department to review their draft budgets uh, with me and my staff uh, so that I can assure that they meet the guidelines and requirements uh, and are in alignment with the board's priorities uh, and also that everything balances by the, by the time it's all said and done. Uh, and I, I take that information and with advice and counsel of my key staff, I put together for you what uh, is a uh, proposed recommended budget uh, that gets presented, and uh, this year it'll get presented in the final week in May to the budget committee. And we'll hold public meetings. Uh, they'll be held over uh, in the auditorium in the Development Services Building. Uh, and the public is invited to be able to sit in if they'd like to be able to listen in on those. Uh, but we have a public comment uh, period, a hearing scheduled for May 28th at 5.30 p.m. in the evening for the public to come in and comment on anything they have an interest in in the budget. Uh, we've got a little bit of time reserved in the first week in June in case we need it. We'll work on the component unit budgets uh, on June the 1st, the very first uh, Monday in June to go through all of those. And uh, then you'll hold uh, formal public hearings on the final adoption uh, of the budgets, and that uh, then turns into a lot of uh, detail work and publications uh, that uh, then sets up what is the ongoing monitoring and uh, pursuit of uh, making sure we're using the budget in the way the Board of County Commissioners has uh, expected and adopted it. Let's go to the, to the next one. Uh, for anyone who'd like to get involved, uh, of course, our budget documents are uh, posted online on the county web page. They can get to it from, uh, from either the splash page or if they click in uh, clackamas.us backslash budget, uh, they can find the budget documents there uh, for this year and past years. And uh, we also post our uh, comprehensive uh, annual financial reports as well, which is really the sort of after the fact document, after you finish a budget year that reports on how the, the <coughs> county performed during the course of the prior year. Uh, so that information is available online. Um, we would encourage uh, anyone and everyone to attend a budget meeting, come to the public hearing, share what's on your mind about it. Uh, and uh, we are also always interested in uh, soliciting participation uh, for membership on our budget committees. It's all, we've got quite a few budget committees, one for each of those component units, in addition to the general government uh, budget committee. And so uh, it's sometimes a little tough making sure we've, we're fully represented there. And I would encourage anybody who might be listening into the program to... Uh, uh, give us a holler if they are at all interested in participating on any of these budget committees. We'll go to the next page because they can do that by contacting us via email at uh, bcc at clackamas.us. Of course, there's the web page uh, that they can reach, reach us at. Uh, and then they can call the office at 503-655-8581, and we'd be happy to make sure they get uh, the information they need. So that's my uh, presentation, ready to get started. 
I can tell you this. Uh, yesterday, I, uh, I finished all of the departmental reviews. We've uh, still got a little bit of grunt work uh, to, to do in order to get the budget ready for distribution, the draft budget ready for distribution and publication, uh, and still running and verifying the, the numbers that we've received from some of the departments. Uh, but I'm uh, pleased with the position that we're currently in today based on the numbers that I've seen to date. So. Good. Commissioner it. Bernard. So uh, I noted that the county has a balanced budget, huh? We do. Yeah. We, we are required yeah. to have a balanced budget. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is the state required to have a balanced budget? Yes. Mm. I would and assume and so. the only one that isn't is the federal government. That's true. There you go. Um, the sheriff's budget, one thing I've heard over the years is first that we've cut the sheriff's budget. But the old, uh, many times I've heard that the sheriff's budget was 80% of the budget. Uh, I don't know. I've never seen that. Uh, I mean, historically, probably, uh, you know, a hundred years ago, the sheriff's budget was probably a hundred percent of the budget, just about. But um, then, then also, you know, in let's say H3S, where they provide mental health services to the sheriff, um, well, and to um, yeah, at the both the jail and and out on parole, uh, patrol. Um, in in that, do they in the budget? define where those dollars go, I mean, to the jail or, or in partnership or? Oh, we, we can call from the budget notes and materials those particular figures. You won't see it in the uh, immediate documents that, that get uh, published and presented, but it's easy enough to drill down to the information and pull the numbers for you. Yeah, I, you know, I, you don't have to do that. But uh, One thing I would love to, a little history on the sheriff's budget. Mm -hmm. And then the other is property tax restrictions. There are, we know that property taxes can't be used for roads. Mm -hmm. Is there any other restriction on property taxes that you know of or do you know of any? Uh, off the top of my head, I mean, I can't imagine you using them for private purposes, uh, yeah. but so long as it's a legitimate public purpose and. Uh, responsibility of county government. You, you can the unrestricted funds in the general fund are available to do a wide range of things that benefit the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when you talk about unrestricted funds, they're they're not totally unrestricted. And for example, you can't use them for roads. Right. So, but the um, you know the small amount of of the general fund. That is unrestricted, which you said was a hundred and something million, 116? 150, 150 uh, million. 150 million. Yes. Uh, and I think that slide, I'd love to see that slide uh, in compar comparison to the entire budget. What r the commission really has the flexibility to deal with. I think that'd be a good slide to sure. add. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Savage. Well, I, I don't take a lot of pride in telling folks out there, which is my point really, is that we don't have. Of, the, of that money, 805 million or the 606 million or whatever it may be, or the 113 million of, of general fund money. Uh, irregardless is that we ought to have, I think we ought to have a little bit more discretion um, and have a little bit more available flexibility to adjust our priorities because if we don't, how do we, how do we take the priorities we have established and put those into action? And without the budget, budgetary discretion, uh, we're, we have very limited ability to do that. I do want to note that Commissioner Bernard rightfully raising, yes, we cannot use property tax revenues for roads, but we are using gas tax revenue, which goes to roads, for things that um, aren't directly on the road that property tax can pay for. I think we identified 4.5 million of gas tax money that are being used in that way. So there is some adjustments we can make there to, to Pave more roads, and I think that's that's the effort we need to make, and that's a prioritization. For example, one example that we could use, and have greater discretion if we had a little bit more money to do that with. So, hopefully, we can do that uh, June first. Well, but, you know, I, I'm going to weigh in on this because we have before. You know, there are evidently identified by our legal staff and uh, professional staff up to 4.5 million dollars that we can use. Um, for what is not, they have deemed to be non-road purposes, but in fact, 
every time we do a road, uh, we have to apply to do a road, just like anybody else in this county. We have to apply. To me, that's a direct correlated response to the application. And it is a cost of roads to pay for those applications. In addition to that, one of the other ones described is that um, even though it's off-road, such things as guardrails, but again, to me, that's directly related to those roads. Uh, in addition to that, the Canby Ferry has been one of those identified. And it does cost money to keep the MJ Lee running. But it is a road. It's a floating road, but it's a road. So I think the, the biggest concern for those of us approving a budget is if we said, and when last year we put 500000 towards that, um, not surplus money, certainly, because we could have used it elsewhere, is if we're going to grab another $4 million this year to help our, out our road situation and really, again, related road costs, where does that come from? Whose department do we chop it from? I'm looking out here, some staff saying, you know, maybe we should just cut it from your department, right? And the fact, you know, they're pointing at each other. Um, yeah. But the point of the matter is, is we have a definitive amount of money, not an infinite amount of money, and we have specific programs which we think are, are rated higher above given four, uh, additional $4 million towards really road-related projects. Mr. Krupp. So it's, it's all about uh, the priorities of the board, and right. when it comes time to talk about uh, what your priorities are, we'll be able to tell you precisely how much capacity you've got uh, in additional revenues to be able to uh, make those choices about, uh, and then it'll be the board's prerogative as to how to pursue. Commissioner Savas. Well, well, well said. I think that I think you summed it up. And the other thing that the people out there ought to be realize is that we have new revenues that are greater, high, higher and above what we, we collected last year. So how those are directed is some of that new money, or ought to be some of that new money that becomes more discretionary than than the prior commitment. So, okay. Commissioner Bernard. Well, I just want to add. For example, uh, if you drive around the county, we have a lot of slide areas. Now, maintaining a slide is not paving a road, but it's definitely part of that. And uh, for example, the Sandy uh, River Lolo Pass Road, um, you know, we had a lot of money spent in that. Some of it we got back. Um, but uh, all those things, just like you know, John may be a conservative, but he has a big heart. And taking away from, let's say, community corrections uh, money or health and uh, family services, it, it, it's a it's a decision you have to make that uh, is not pleasant. <laughs> and something that um, you know, I hope to get a million for roads. Uh, we did have some extra money come in. Um, with the Secure Rural Schools money, thanks to Congress and our representatives in Congress, which is somewhere around a million, we're guessing, right? Mm -hmm. Have we got a figure? And I'd love to see, and that money can be spent for, ro well, only, we don't, is that it's part of It's unrestricted, ours? It's yeah. it goes into the general fund, it's unrestricted, yeah. it could be used for almost anything. So. But we also had a mental health facility that uh, is, uh, uh, being planned, and they're looking for a million from us. So uh, I don't know where we are, we would get all that, but uh, I just thought I just want to note that last year's budget was very good, I, and I've always believed that once we got out of this terrible economy, uh, we would have some opportunities. This is my starting my seventh year as a commissioner, and this is the first time that there's actually some good news. Mm -hmm. And uh, the good news is we'll be able to do more because we were getting, uh, because of the economy growing. And so I'm excited to have more choices than we've had in the past. So, and also last year I thought, you know, with a really tight budget, um, we, we weren't sure what was going to happen. You did a really great job, and, and all of us in, enjoyed the budget process, Fine. which is another thing I'd never done before. <laughs> but also, you know, we're going to have something new that we're all going to have to learn, and that and that is the new process that these folks are going through. Um, and some of us will want more information. Mm -hmm. Some of us will be satisfied. I just want to, when I started the city of Milwaukee, our budget was this big. By the time I left, it was this big. 
Now it's this big. Again. So, you know, as commissions or city councils change, I want more information, less information. But in the end, you've got to decide how to distribute those dollars and what impact they'll be. And I always think like community corrections. Absolutely. Talking to the sheriff the other day in uh, CSAP programs, very important programs, saves lives. Um, that's one of the best investments we can make because it saves families, saves lives. So that's kind of something, well, let's take that and put it in roads, but then we'd have those people out there and their families destroyed. It's a really super uh, investment that, that we do. But anyway, I'm excited to have an opportunity to look at a, a budget that's much more pleasant. Yeah, I do acknowledge that there, I don't want to call it extra money, but there is additional monies here. But you know, from yesterday when, when three of us were uh, listening in a very small room to the in, about the intercept program, where they are intercepting um, perverted men who were chasing adolescent children uh, through the internet and how really underfunded that is. And then you look at Pathfinders, you know, a program that the state is going to start cutting seriously that does excellent work and integrating people back into our population and, and addressing mental health issues. Um, these are these are programs that I have a great affinity towards, and I if you weigh it on the scale of put it into roads when you really it you know our tax money is not related to roads it should be user related, or these programs I'll take these programs any day, as Jim said you know we we have a lot of excellent programs out there and it's one thing to maintain them, but to sustain them there is a growth in costs every year. Commissioner Schrader. Yeah, I really wanted to thank you for this great presentation. So I would like, I was wondering if we could get a copy of it. Sure. An electronic we, copy we of it. And um, I'd also like to have a copy. So when I go do my outreach to folks, I'd like to bring this with me and talk about the budget. Oftentimes I go out with Frank Mag Maglin as well, who is the chair, the assistant chair of our budget committee. And uh, we kind of do a road show with that. But this Excellent. is one of the best presentations I've seen. And it'd be nice to, um, get the slideshow and a narrative with that so so we can clarify as we are around the county. Uh, the other comment I want to make is that uh, Commissioner Bernard mentioned secure rural schools. Yes, we did. I also want to thank members of the ONC counties, uh, who of which I'm a member of that board, and they very diligently uh, lobbied with our folks as well to make sure that that was included in federal legislation so we could get our dollars. We are a member county and uh, they have served us well. They are always on top of that issue and they continue to be one of the bigger advocates we have for uh, appropriate forestry practices at the federal level. Mm -hmm. If, if I may just say oh, one quick ahead. thing, I, I, I want to uh, thank both Laura Butman and Diane Padilla for putting that outstanding PowerPoint together. Thank you. That's so, yes. really mm -hmm. great. Yes. Commissioner Savas. Yeah, well, I appreciate Commissioner Ludlow bringing up the uh, intercept deal yesterday. We saw that presentation. And I want to acknowledge the sheriff for his great work in, in that and the child abuse summit that he puts on every year, um, worthwhile. But I think what my takeaway was, and I mentioned it yesterday, uh, Commissioner Bernard, uh, Commissioner Ludlow and Commissioner Bernard and I were there yesterday. I do want to acknowledge that um, this has got, you know, this is around the world. This problem and the networking and the, and this whole thing is, so I, I really, and I raised it yesterday, this is a state issue and it ought to be funded from a statewide issue. It shouldn't be, uh, you know, all, all of that burden shouldn't be on Clackamas County to solve. And I think that the financial responsibility and actually the teamwork and effort, the networking effort ought to be statewide. So hopefully we can maybe bring and form a committee uh, or at least a, a setting where we invite our legislators into a setting where maybe the Sheriff Roberts can, um, number one, give us the presentation that he gave to them, but may perhaps seek a statewide effort to fund that because I think it is terribly important and important enough that we just don't have the funds to solve it on our own. And it's such a, a, a huge problem. It, it needs at least a statewide effort, at the very minimum. Thank you, Mr. Krupp. It was extremely well done, and I appreciate you doing that. Uh, I remember coming to you and asking you if you would give an overview, uh, simply because a lot of people don't know it's budget time. Mm -hmm. Certainly not enough show up to opine about our budget or any section of our budget, budget, and it would be really great, and you did a great presentation about how it works, when it works, 
and when it ends, mm -hmm. which is probably as, as appropriate as anything else. And now we have some public hearings, Mr. Krupp. Uh, we do. This is the first reading of an ordinance that would amend Chapter 6.06 .06 regarding park rules. I'm going to ask Kathleen Rastetter from the County Council's Office and Mr. Rick Groon from County Parks to uh, give you a presentation and a recommendation. So, go ahead. I want to acknowledge, uh, <coughs> see, Rick Gruen, by the very nature of his job, dresses rather casually around the county, and it is really wonderful to see you, uh, interesting, in a lovely suit and a, a heck of a good-looking tie, Mr. Gruen. Well, this is why I like to come, so I can get dressed up once in a while. I'm sure. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Ludlow, Commissioners. I'm Kathleen Rastetter from Clackamas County Council, and Rick Rune is with me. We're here on behalf of Clackamas County Parks, and we're presenting a first reading of an ordinance amendment to amend the park rules to add a violation for failure to display a permit um, for entry to the park. And you have, as part of this presentation, the uh, recommended language of the ordinance and as you'll see the code already said that no one could enter a park um, or use the park facilities without first paying entry for the permit and we believed that that included having to display the permit but there was apparently some confusion or at least the clarity the lack of clarity in our code was causing some of the um, violations that would be written to be tossed out. And so we felt this amendment was needed to make it clear that you not only have to pay, but also show and prove that you'd pay by displaying that permit. So this is an amendment to add that piece to the code. Well, everybody else does it. I mean, you have to display your permit. I don't know why we shouldn't do it. And it shouldn't be a burden on people. Just put it in your window. That's correct. That's what we're asking for with this ordinance change. So that was your presentation? Yes, if you do. I like do you have those. Any questions? No, no, I'm not <laughs> complaining. That's great. Yeah. Uh, Commissioners, any questions of the presenter? I do. Um, so this is not has anything to do with raising any fees or fines. Um, this is simply that one rule. Correct. It, it does make it a violation not to display the permit, but that violation had been written before as part of the failure to pay the entry fee. It, it, that's how it was enforced, was you can't prove you paid and therefore we're writing the violation. But we were getting uh, people saying, well, I did pay, and there was no proof of that without dis displaying it. So this clarifies that that failure to display is the violation. Okay, I'm gonna open the public hearing and ask if anyone wishes to speak on this matter. You would have to turn in a, a blue blue card. I think switch it from green to blue here. Um, I see none, so I'm going to close the public hearing That's and, and uh, ask for the motion. I move, we, I move we read the ordinance by title only. Second. All right, motion made by Commissioner Bernard, seconded by Commissioner Savas. Um, any further clarification about reading the by title only? I'll ask the clerk to call the poll. Commissioner Bernard. Aye. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Chair Ludlow. I passes 5-0. I'll ask the clerk to assign a number and read the ordinance by title only. Okay, this is going to be ordinance number 05-2015. An ordinance amending chapter 6.06, .06, park rules, and appendix B, fines, of the Clackamas County Code. All right. Any further discussion by commissioners? Uh, changes at this time? Amendments? All right. The second reading will be on May 14, 2015, at our regularly scheduled business meeting at 10 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Great you presentation, very much. Rick. My pleasure. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Commissioner. It is. Yeah. It's a and great time. Time for the consent agenda. I'll ask the clerk to read the consent agenda by title. Okay. The consent agenda. Under the Department of Transportation and Development, approval of a contract with Baker Rock Resources for chip seal and oil rock delivered to various Clackamas County stockpile sites. Under elected officials, we have a approval of previous business meeting <coughs> minutes, approval of the Clackamas County Internal Audit Charter, that's through the Clackamas County Treasurer's Office, and also approval of the annual Clackamas County Investment Policy, also through the Clackamas County Treasurer's Office. 
under Public and Government Affairs, approval of an amendment to the personal service contract with Fish Marketing for road maintenance outreach, graphic design, and social media support services. Under Business and Community Services, a board order approving the transfer of an unimproved tax foreclosed parcel to Metro for the Newell Creek conservation, conservation efforts. And under Water Environment Services, approval of a contract between Clackamas County Service District Number 1 and Brown and Caldwell, Inc. for consulting services for the Kellogg Creek Wastewater Pollution Control Plant Improvement Project. And that concludes the consent agenda. All right, commissioners who wish to remove any of the items from the consent agenda, I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Bernard, seconded by Commissioner Schrader. Any further discussion? All right, Mary. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Bernard. Aye. Chair Ludlow. Aye. Passes 5 0. And now, Mr. Krupp, twice today we get to hear about your wisdom and, and your travels. I'm out of breath. <laughs> So I've got, uh, I've got several items uh, to share with you. One, uh, last night I had a chance to uh, uh, get introduced uh, to uh, our citizen participants in the Clackamas Citizens Academy. Uh, as you may recall, our Employee Leadership Academy uh, had assembled a team of county staff that recommended we create a, an academy for citizens to learn about their county government. Uh, and last night, uh, some 22 uh, citizens uh, with a number of uh, diverse backgrounds and from all over the county uh, participated in what was the inaugural session uh, of the academy. Uh, they will spend the next six months learning about county government. Uh, they'll be hearing from department directors and, and others. It'll be a great opportunity uh, to get feedback and another great opportunity to spread the good word about the many things that we do here for the public uh, and communities here in Clackamas County. Uh, the next item I have is to recognize uh, Jamie Jonk uh, with our Business uh, and Economic Development Division. She uh, presented the county's uh, employment lands project at the American Planning Association National Conference that was held in uh, Seattle just this last week. Uh, her talk was on uh, the regional industrial site planning that showcases uh, how Clackamas County is taking steps to make our sites competitive on a national and global scale. Uh, there were more than 6,000 planners who attended the conference. Uh, so thanks very much to Jamie for, for being able to do that. It's actually quite an honor to be able to be a part of a presentation for a national conference like that. So great, great work. Uh, and then uh, finally, we had a number of students at Clackamas High School uh, install a couple of uh, rain gardens on campus uh, last week. This is a project uh, that is uh, shepherded by our Water Environment Services uh, Department to help uh, uh, efforts to improve water quality uh, throughout Clackamas County Service District Number 1 uh, at several locations in partnership uh, with organizations like the North Clackamas uh, School District. Uh, so gr great work there. I have three, count them, three very nice letters from uh, citizens uh, directed towards specific county employees that did some good things. If I could just quickly uh, run through them. Uh, one is from an Artie Trust out of Sandy, Oregon. Um, this is an individual who uh, raises sheep and goats uh, for market. Uh, and he, he was quite happy with uh, the assistance he received from uh, Mark Little, our county trapper, uh, helping to identify a, a predator that was uh, attacking uh, and killing his represents uh, individuals in his flock, individual lambs, market lambs. What was it? Uh, it was a uh, male mountain lion. Hmm. So they were able to track that down and, and uh, take care of the situation. So uh, anyway, uh, as you all know, we have a contract uh, with, with Mr. Little to provide this very unique service uh, throughout the county. Uh, then I also got a nice note. Um, just letting me know about uh, an individual who lives in the North Clackamas Parks and Recreation District 
uh, really just kind of singing the praises of our uh, crew out there who are working on the trolley trail. Uh, and, and so wanted to make sure I, I thanked uh, Kevin Kaysen and his staff, Mark and Hop, uh, for that work. He was really quite pleased with the work they were doing there along the trail. And I have one more. Um, th this is one that uh, was a letter received uh, a couple of weeks ago by Commissioner Bernard. Uh, and it's actually directed uh, to uh, the tax assessor's office, uh, Cindy Swick in the, in the assessor's office. Uh, this individual, uh, uh, Roger Willis, was expressing his great appreciation for Cindy's efforts to help him work through what was a really challenging and, and difficult problem and uh, helping to solve that particular problem. And he especially acknowledged the courteous, accurate, and prompt assistance that he received from, uh, from Cindy. So thank you uh, to Cindy. He says that she deserves gold stars for her superior level of customer service. So. All right, thank you. Well done. And uh, time for Commissioner's communication. I'll start with Commissioner Schrader. Yeah, um, I have a couple of things I wanted to talk about today. It's been a busy week, but in particular, I wanted to talk about the American Association of University Women. Uh, I'm a member of the AAUW and have been a member of a number of years and am a member of the uh, chapter in the Lake Oswego area and also are familiar with a lot of the women who are a member of the chapter up on the mountain. What is the AAUW? Essentially, it's a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization founded in 1881 with the purpose, essentially, of making sure that women had opportunities in higher education. Today, it has 170,000 members uh, nationwide. There are 1,000 local branches and 800 college and university partners. They essentially at this, uh, at this time work on women's issues and that includes everything from uh, you know equal pay, which is one of their biggest issues right now, to actually in the past supporting Title IX, which we remember in 1971-72 actually uh, allowed women at that point to really have equal participation in uh, sports. I remember being in high school at that time and not having a softball team, not having uh, any, any team where women were actually trained. My uncle was the uh, person who was the coach for the baseball team, but uh, we, we really didn't have the same opportunities. And I'm proud to say over 50 years later, when my daughters became uh, softball players, they had uniforms, they had equipment, uh, they were fantastic players, went to state. My younger daughter is an All-American and still has unbroken records at Wheaton College where she was one of the fastest kids on the team in softball. And uh, we didn't have those same opportunities. But the AAUW was responsible, I think, for pushing that as well and making that one of their biggest issues. And historically, um, they are, uh, have always continued to make sure that women have equal access. One of their recent initiatives is equal pay for equal work. And the data that they've examined really still shows that nationally women make about 78% of what uh, men make. They have approached our board with the possibility of a resolution and um, they're excited about it. I'm assuming that that will still be a continued discussion with us. I'm proud of being a member and I'm proud of what they do for women uh, here in the state as well as uh, women nationally. Uh, so with that, that was, my, that was my public announcement for the day. Um, and uh, go AAUW, appreciate your support and membership and really am so grateful that you are one of the organizations since, since 1881 that has provided continued scholarships for women to have access to higher education. Thank you. Commissioner Bernard. Um, spent some time in Salem. Uh, actually, twice I've been to Salem, and by the time I got there, it was all over with. Or I waited three hours, and then they moved the meeting. Um, I suppose that uh, I, there should be a little more courtesy to folks who drive long distances uh, and uh, then they cancel the meeting when you've been, you're the first on the list, which I was the first on the list. Um, 
One was uh, 3211, and the other one um, was uh, 911 tax increase. They haven't raised the uh, fee to uh, uh, since the 90s, I believe. And one of the problems that we have is that cell phones, if you have a, you're injured, you have a cell phone, uh, we can't find you. Uh, we can't track you, so we need uh, uh, to update our technology so that we can identify your location uh, if something were to happen. We did attend the Child Abuse Summit, and uh, one thing I really learned is that, boy, you better watch your kids. And a lot of that has to do with what is going on in chat rooms and with some of those um, uh, tools of uh, uh, reaching out and meeting people. One was called Kick, K-I-K, -K, out of Canada. Uh, those predators are using these all the time, and the incidence of predators uh, reaching these kids because of the internet has just exploded. So if I if if I had kids at home who were using uh, on the internet, I would sit them down right now and I mean today, not tomorrow, but today, and make them aware of the dangers of chatting. Now these people have photos; they can steal from anybody, and you can look like a 15-year-old and you can be 50. Um, it also occurs with, with, with women too, predators. But, um, and, and the speaker was fantastic, uh, a retired FBI agent. Um, he, was, he was abused by a, uh, a camp host and um, he decided that after that, that would be one of his uh, career goals is to uh, make sure that we identify and stop these people. <clears throat> really a great job. I think today we heard a couple of things. Um, I, I think that next year one of our priorities should be to change that uh, property tax deduction for vets and we should make reach out to some of our legislators and have them update that. I mean, it is crazy. Uh, I guarantee you no one's around from the Civil War. It was 150 years ago, mm -hmm. celebrated the end of the Civil War just the other day. Uh, there is nobody alive from the Civil War. The other thing is that child pornography, and I agree with Commissioner Savas, is that Clackamas County and Multnomah County take the lead in the state. And we th there ought to be some funding that specifically goes after child trafficking and internet uh, tracking of these folks. The other thing is I missed the transportation thing the other day, and I think we should be in Salem um, talking about a fee for bicycles. Maybe it's $5, maybe it's $10, that when you sell a bike, you collect a fee. I think it's a statewide issue. I do. I don't know how many bicycle stores there are here. I know like Toys R Us and places like that <coughs> sell bikes. But even if it's, it's the perception is we spend money for bicycle trails mm -hmm. and these folks don't pay for that. That's not true. Of course, they have cars and they pay property taxes. But still, the perception is there. And a 5 or $10 fee is something that's easily collected. It's not a, it's sort of a sales tax, but you know, I used to sell studded tires and we collected so much per tire, we, it was easy to track. And then we'd send it to the state and they quit that years ago. But it would be something that the citizens of, of Oregon could say, look, we collected how many millions on bicycle sale transactions and these dollars are dedicated to bicycle paths. Then we could maybe say, well, we, we don't have to spend that money. We could also show the federal government that we are committed. You give us some money for bicycle, we will, we will you know, match that or, or, or don't force us to spend money on bicycle paths and we will pay for it with this money we collect. But I, I think those are three things we ought to look at, the leg some priorities for next year. And I think the veterans thing is, is really something that, 
You know, I didn't know until the other day that uh, that it talked about the Civil War, and and I think uh, Teddy Roosevelt was involved in one of the wars they identified. Um, so I, it'd be something we should have a prior as a priority. Um, I think that Salem's a big challenge, and, and there's there were thousands of bills presented. I don't know how many are left. And we have, I, I just want to mention that Chris Lyons, our uh, staff down in Salem, really does a fantastic job. Um, not only, I, he has great, res he's respected by the legislators. Uh, hands him a note, they come out of the room, and they stand there, and they talk to us. And I just really thought he did a, he does a fantastic job. He's very professional. And uh, those guys have to watch all these bills and make sure that Clackamas County is represented. And I, I think uh, Chris has really done a great job. We should be proud. And I want to thank him um, for, for the work he does. Of course, the last one I drove down to Salem, I walk up to him in the Capitol waiting for Clem to come out, Representative Clem to come out, and he says, well, the bill is dead. <laughs> but at least we got to present those four items to him, and Chris uh, sent that to them, and so people know that, um, that we're working towards that. And, and then Clem committed to helping resolve the uh, Stafford issue, and if not, I, not, he'd like to see us get close, and he can help us in Salem in February. So I think that was uh, very valuable. So yes. thank you, Chris, and thank you, uh, Government Affairs, for your work with us in Salem. Thank you, Jim. Commissioner Smith. Um, yeah, we have a lot to talk about. Thank you, Martha, uh, Commissioner Schrader, for bringing up the women's issue. It was 1976, and uh, I was in college, and my tennis team had won the national, the uh, Northwest Championships. We were supposed to go to Texas to play in the national tournament, and we were denied uh, because we didn't have the equal uh, status that a lot of our college athletes uh, enjoy now. And um, all those issues that you bring up are very important to me as well, and my daughter. And you have daughters as we move forward. And I, and I think that is very good that you brought light to that. Uh, yesterday, I was in Salem testifying on uh, Senate Bill 941. I was not able to attend the Sheriff's Summit. Uh, but I want to thank our commissioners who did that. Uh, it was about a seven-hour hearing on uh, gun background checks, which really, uh, in my opinion, inhibited uh, the ability for law-abiding citizens. I don't think that this bill will stop criminals, but it will hurt people who have engaged in an activity for generations. And I testified on that. And the Oregonian quoted me, so that was pretty good. Now I want to talk about uh, last week the... Uh, we had um, emergency management training at the FEMA campus in Emmitsburg, Maryland. Uh, and that was paid for 100% by FEMA. We were able to send 72 people back from Clackamas County, which included Chair Ludlow, Don Krupp, and myself, high-level uh, staff people, and uh, people who actually do our work. Uh, present were um, not only our, our Clackamas County staffers from the Roads Department and uh, in, uh, sewer and our legal staff, Chris was there. We also had the fire departments and we had the uh, sheriff's department, we had the state medical examiner present, and this was very intense training. They gave us a real life scenario, not unfamiliar of our spring break quake in the mid 90s. It was a 6.2 earthquake on the Mount Angel fault line. Lasted for 25 seconds and was 10 meters deep. They actually had a FEMA official come out and take pictures of some of our structures and then manipulated them to look like what they would be, the shape they would be in uh, after the earthquake. And one of our bridges was lopsided, and some of the buildings had, not this building, had uh, bricks crumbling down. It was very real life. We sat in classes from about 8 in the morning to 4 and 5 in the evening. And then we ate on campus, cafeteria style, almost military-like uh, precision on how we were um, 
uh, treated with great respect, by the way, and full participation for the county. For me, it was really life-changing and life-affirming, and you won't hear me say things like that often because there are very few experiences in life that have such a profound effect, I think, on people. As a leader in this county, I know what my role is, and it's to help when I can. Did they serve chip beef? Uh, I believe so. There was a mystery meat one night, and we're <laughs> not sure what that was yet. I don't know, Martha. Uh, but it was uh, pounded, breaded, uh, fried, and then gravied. So uh, with that aside... <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it was great. With that aside, I think you can be very, very confident in our staff that they know what they're doing. Uh, we have had training. We have prepared for this. And the big takeaway for me that I tell my friends and my family, number one, learn to take care of yourself. Have your to-go kit in your car. You can go on ready slash dot gov and find out what you need. If you're home, you need to be able to prepare for yourself for two weeks without water and electricity. That can be easily done on the same website. So take responsibility for yourself. While your government, your county government, is a very well-oiled machine, we will be out putting systems together, doing assessments on the damage. Uh, and I even told my family, you two are on your own. I will be back at the county if I can get in, which I think Jim Bernard and, and I, in this scenario, may have been the only two county campuses to get to uh, our headquarters down here. And so uh, that presented us with another problem. Uh, half of our county employees probably could not make it in, so what do we do? But it was a fantastic learning experience. Your tax dollars are at work. And again, it puts Clackamas County as a leader, once again, in this particular area of emergency management. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Savs. Yeah, so I just want to briefly uh, just mention that the, um, gave a little bit of a, f the numbers report on the Eagles landing thing, but we do have that now posted on our county website, so people are able to uh, look at the fact sheet and some of the updated numbers on that. But what I really wanted to talk about today was, and we heard a little bit of it today, Appreciate the administrator's presentation on the budget, but it's uh, it's uh, it's all about the money often, and uh, this is that time of year. Uh, I think it's important to point out as we're looking, we've been talking about our road issue and perhaps looking at going to the voters for more money to fix, you know, a well-established deficit in, in the amount of money, or not a deficit, but a need to repair our roads, and we've marketed numbers like, you know, it. Maybe for every dollar we spend today, we can save 10 in the future, or every dollar we can save 13. Whatever the number is, it's significant. And I, I think where those roads, to identify those roads that we invest today, that some of those monies we have, that, you know, whether it's apportioning another million dollar commitment this year on top of the 500,000 we made last year, I appreciate Commissioner Bernard's suggestion of that. That's great. But those are dollars I think we have to look at, not what our budget is or DTD's budget is or the, all, the, all the budgets combined, but also the budgets of the families and the citizens out there that have, to, that have limited budgets. And if we can save them money by spending dollars today, maybe there's a mechanism in there on a future um, uh, fee or whatnot that we can roll that back if we can collect enough and save enough so that they're not permanently, though their budgets aren't permanently impacted by a utility fee or a gas tax or a vehicle registration fee that we have some ability to scale that back if we are in a position of, of perhaps collecting more than we need. But we're a long ways from that, but I think we need to be respectful that it's not just our budget here as a government, but it's people's budget at home. Um, so on that note, I do want to also uh, acknowledge and thank our um, county treasurer, Sherry Anderson, for her work and effort and the, and the administrator and the team on putting together the charter for, which we approved today in the consent agenda for the internal auditor. I appreciate it. It's been about a year, year and a few months it, since we endeavored on this path, and it's great that we're, we're making traction on that. I believe we're advertising for that position now. So uh, kudos to everyone there. And um, again, it's that time of the year. It's budget season. So uh, looking forward to seeing what we can do to to realize some of those savings for our citizens. Uh, just to kind of go over, like I usually do, a little bit of the week. Uh, as Tootie said, you know, we graduated. We graduated from the Emergency Management Institute. 
And it was highly interesting. But I, I just want to give kudos to our staff that went back there. You know, um, I've said it before uh, with much humor, is, but the fact of the matter is, is we are not professionals. We are generalists up here. And we make decisions that include ordinances, resolutions, et cetera. And it was not much different back there. We made a proclamation. Uh, we got a, a couple of uh, photo ops, so to speak, about that. But really, the, then our very able staff took over. Uh, it, it, was, uh, it was very interesting and, and I think uh, gratifying to see these excellent staff work together and to be complimented by the staff who was training us saying, you guys are well ahead of the bell curve here, doing a, a fantastic job. Uh, in fact, at the end, of the, the facilitator said, wrote Oregon on a black boat, uh, board and he said, you are organized. And uh, indeed, we were. Uh, I think we did a great job, and our staff, like I say, was absolutely outstanding. Laurel Butman did an outstanding job, as Don did. Just the four of us, Tootie and I, and uh, Laurel and, and Don were in a room making executive decisions, but we would sneak off on purpose to observe the happenings in the other rooms, which, were, were, uh, which really resembled bedlam at times. Uh, but they were really getting a lot done, communicating highly, and then they the staff would throw a curve at us, some emergency would happen, and a bridge would collapse, supposedly some employees died and they didn't, so there was always a lot of action. But anyway, that was a really great exercise uh, back there, and it was back there. Uh, so it also, I want to acknowledge that I attended my first local public safety coordinating committee called LIPSIC, which Commissioner Bernard made me, I mean, asked me to join. And um, uh, I, I really had a, a good time. Chris Hoy, our very able uh, director of, uh, of uh, community corrections, was chairing the meeting. Some interesting questions came out of that. And the biggest question always is, is and Jim has talked about this for some time, is, is how much funding are we going to get? And that's still very much up in the air because uh, that is the lifeblood of corrections specifically and of juvenile as well, uh, is where does the money come from and is it enough? Um, the, as was mentioned, we went to the, some of us went to the summit yesterday, uh, excellent program, dynamic speakers, interesting and sad topics, I might add, but um, it was on child and family abuse. Um, the, I met the, this morning, it was interesting to see at the Westside Economic Alliance, the five uh, Washington County mayors get together and tell about their needs and, and worries. Now, their, their cities are bigger than ours. You know, they went through the numbers and, you know, we're 98,000, we're 102,000. You know, shoot, our biggest one's like 35. So it was interesting to see the big city mayors talk about their needs, which are not dissimilar to ours. Um, I mentioned before that I think people really ought to watch or listen to our Tuesday meetings where really a lot of action policy setting occurs. These meetings, um, you know, we take care of public hearings. We certainly have... Uh, um, some uh, very interesting topics brought forward by our staff at our request, but really where we do grind out a lot of work in a period of time is on our, at our Tuesday meetings. As I mentioned, uh, Senate Bill 716, which we supported, died this week. House Bill 3211, which had to do with the Stafford area and it turns out a lot of other areas, also died this week. Um, so there's a lot of them. I think that our former two former legislators fully understand that a lot of things die this week, uh, and so there there was. I think that I'd heard there were 1,700 bills submitted, and I don't know, like Jim said, how many are left, but it, it is not many. Um, we had a report on results of our June 30th annual audits, and it, uh, it is gratifying to see, according to our aud auditor, that uh, actually our reporting is improving and uh, down to where there's f very few instances that needed to be cited at all. Um, and then we had a little talk about marijuana. Certainly uh, this board last week, uh, in my absence, and rightfully so, approved the medical marijuana ordinance. And uh, the next uh, subject matter is gonna be bigger and more dynamic, and that is recreational marijuana, time, place, manner, uh, and it is very concerning to some of our neighborhoods. Uh, one of our staff reported a conversation with an attorney who uh, said that that attorney represents 300 pot growers who want to come to Clackamas County and grow pot. Now, I know that past in Clackamas County, you know, to that extent, I will bet you that not a person up here voted for it, but it passed. 
So the question is, is how can that be integrated into our world, into our society, without causing a great deal of pain to especially juveniles? And that's been said since, from the very beginning is, is pot is not, and or is derivatives, which include gummy bears for goodness sakes and everything else, it, it's not in a vacuum. When those people take that home legally, do they lock it in the safe? No, it's accessible. And uh, I've, I had friends when I was growing up who used to, you know, rob the vodka bottle and fill, fill it with water, with that which what they took. Well, I don't know what you put in there, but grass clippings, you know, for pot, but it probably wouldn't look the same. And, uh, but, you know, a little bit goes a long ways, and I'm very concerned still about, here we talk about guns, you know, and how it's proper to lock them up and keep them safe. It's the same situation with marijuana then if you're going to have it and you legally have it, then keep it away from your children. That's going to be the biggest concern. Since medical marijuana even came into the forefront and became legal in Portland area, our juvenile department has reported a spike in um, people, uh, children being uh, involved with the use of marijuana and unfortunately the effects of same. So uh, that will be an ongoing conversation with us for some time. We have few restrictions. Uh, available to us in the land use matters. So we can't zone out the processing, the wholesaling, the growing, or the retail of marijuana. Um, and I'm certain the legislature is going to address this, but I think that the number is 15, 20, 25 bills on marijuana that have yet to be uh, decided down at the legislature. So that's interesting and sad. So I, I want to tell you about our outstanding, this woman is outstanding, um, unsung hero this week. It is Dolores Leonard uh, with Transportation Reaching People. Dolores Leonard was named an outstanding volunteer in recognition of her 27 years of volunteer service to Transportation Reaching People program, TRP program. Dolores was inspired to volunteer after seeing the struggles that her mother encountered when she was no longer able to drive. So for 27 years, Dolores helped seniors and people with disabilities get to medical appointments and meet other critical needs, like getting to the grocery store. It's as simple as that. Dolores has recently retired from her volunteer service and will be missed. What an outstanding ministry for that woman to provide that kind of incredibly important service for 27 years. Um, I want to announce to you that we had a town hall, but there's more. Would you put that up? We had a town hall on Tuesday night at, uh, at Athey Creek Middle School in the Stafford area. There is no doubt that uh, predominant in the minds of the majority of people attending that they wanted to talk about um, how building a strong, or excuse me, how grow a vibrant economy had to do with the Stafford area and the bills that were affecting that and our directions or lacks there, lack thereof. So it was an interesting meeting. Uh, I assured them at the end of it that our next meeting would probably not ha even have the mention of Stafford, although it could. And you can see uh, by that in front of you that our next one is at Milwaukee High School, a place that Jim Bernard and I both attended, although I didn't graduate from there. I graduated from Rex Putnam next door. But uh, Milwaukee High School, Wednesday, June 17th at 6 p.m., and the topic of discussion will be build a strong infrastructure. Then the next one, and can be, on August 31st, still at 6 p.m., that's ensure safe and healthy communities, and finally to honor, utilize, promote, and invest in our natural resources, that topic at Welch's Resort at the Mountain on October 28th. We're trying to tie these into the theme of our uh, performance clackmas, which is our strategic plan and to, to open it up to questions about that, certainly, and everybody's vision about how we would arrive at these important uh, uh, successes. So anyway, I think that that is about all I have here today, except for to acknowledge that um, several of us are members of the, of the Grange, and it's, it's Grange Month, and since 1867, the Grange has been a grassroots movement for the benefit of the American families and local communities together, together, together. It is, they do have a lot of youth programs in the Grange. Uh, I happen to know from personal experience, they have fantastic food sharing on Thursday nights, at least at my Grange, the Redland Grange. But uh, again, their big, uh, their big charge is to really build uh, strong individuals out of their youth 
and certainly to, uh, to support those who are in leadership roles throughout our county. There are 17 granges in Clackamas County. To find one, just look up Oregon Grange, and they'll give you a guide to how to get there. Ladies and gentlemen, there being no further business before the commission this day, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>